All right, well, I guess we are live here. Let me change the screen here. There we go. Thank you so much for having me. Um, thank you, Sketchy, for having me again on Sketchy Live. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to see everyone here, see where everyone's from. I am in Southern California, newbie to Southern California. Um, I used to be on the East Coast of the United States. So hello, anyone from California, give me a shout out here. I'm excited to be here. We're gonna be playing in my sketchbook. Wanted to announce as well that I am actually, I actually have a course coming out here on Sketchy. It's rolling out tomorrow. It's called Expressive Portraits with me. We'll be exploring four uh, portraits in our sketchbook, playing with different uh, techniques, mediums, acrylic, uh, watercolor, ink, collage, everything, anything I can get my hands on. And so I'm going to be incorporating some of those ideas and techniques in today's live session. But if you want to learn more, definitely check it out. It's going live tomorrow. And I also hear that there's a July 4th sale coming up. So I, I don't know. Um, so definitely check it out. I definitely would love to uh, create with all of you. All right. So um, again, my name's Krista. Are we ready to get started? Is everybody ready? I have all the chat here. I'm like watching everyone here. Um, let me just go over what I'm going to be doing here. I've got my sketchbook here and I have my supplies. So I'm gonna change the screen over so you can see what I'm working with here. Let's see if I can do this right here. There we go. There we go. All right, so as you can see here, I have my sketchbook here. And I'm gonna talk about my sketchbook in a second. I'm gonna be using some acrylic paint and I'm also going to be using some colored pencils as well. So I'll be talking about that in a moment. Um, but I just wanted to go over my sketchbook for a second. Um, my sketchbook, and if you get to take the lesson and check out that lesson um, that I'll be, uh, that I worked really hard in putting together for Sketchy, my sketchbook is where I play. It's where I experiment. It's where I play with all the toys that I have at my disposal, all my watercolors. I have to admit, I have a art supply problem. <laughs> I collect art supplies and so I never use them all. I don't know if anybody on the chat here, everybody, anyone who's online does the same, has the same problem as me. I know I don't feel bad, but um, it's the reason why I started working in mixed media because I had all these supplies and I needed to use them. So um, another problem I have is collecting sketchbooks. <laughs> Every time I go to an art store, I have to go home with a brand new sketchbook. So I have about, I'm gonna say about, I have about 30 of them, all in different stages of non-completion. I have never, ever finished a sketchbook to its completion. Can't tell you why <laughs> or what my problem is. I have made the goal this year to fill up this particular sketchbook. I've actually been working with it since the beginning of this year. So fingers crossed that I can get this filled up and then hopefully, you know, I can make it, you know, I can make a book out of it. But I just wanted to share with you some other non-conventional non sketchbook ideas. So I have here, this is what we're gonna be using. This is a Canson Mixed Media. It's nine by 12, the weight is 98 pounds. I like using this because it's not crazy, crazy heavyweight paper, but I just like it. it. It takes a lot of what I have to give it and a lot of layers and so forth. So I like working with it. But I just wanted to share with you for just for a minute before we get started, some non-conventional sketchbooks that I use. Here is a moleskin notebook, just a lined notebook that I utilize as a sketchbook. Basically, I glue two pages together like so. 
and I can paint. It's not the most, it's not the best sketchbook to use because it does rip and stuff if you use too much of the glossy medium or whatever. Um, but it's just a fun like type of sketchbook to play with. And these are actually from Sketchy, these actual uh, images. I've got them, a lot of these faces I got from Sketchy. <laughs> So as you can see, I've never filled it up, but great idea. Also a composition notebook, just glue the pages together. They make for great kind of on the go sketchbooks and they're not that expensive. Um, here, I made my own sketchbook. I use the Canson watercolor paper and I basically, this is a 12 by 18 size and I bind it together with like the this thread um, and I create this really fun look at that I can open it up and look at that that's like so much fun um, and you can make your own sketchbook this was a self portrait I never finished but lots of fun and here you just just I mean there's so much stuff to play with here I also here's another one I made myself it is this is an old canvas that I ripped from my uh, an old painting that I did. I ripped from the frame and I bound it, right? And then I can create this fun little sketchbook here and play with it here. Um, I actually took a class on how to bind a book. So that was really, I got all the tools and everything. It's, it's, you know, it's not that easy, but I had a lot of fun. I feel so proud of myself. I actually made this. So just some ideas, sketchbook ideas that you can, you can make your own. And what a feeling it is when you have your own book that you made yourself filled with all your art. All right, let's get into the art thing. <laughs> Um, so again, my sketchbook is where I play. Um, here are just a few examples of my playing. That here's a self-portrait and I played with, you know, some squiggly lines and, and so forth. I play with, you know, color. I play with different tools. Maybe I, I found these butterfly stencils or, or actually just I collage these butterflies and I use these stencils. This is like a tree stencil that I used. So I, I just like to play and have fun in here. I don't really worry about making it perfect. I don't get into the process of you know perfection here. This is where I just let go, get really intuitive with my process and release. So this is our muse right here. I've already pre-sketched her just for the sake of time, because I just wanted to spend some time on the mixed media and get through all the aspects of what I'm going to be working on. Um, and this is our muse. I hope I pronounced her name right. Musu S. She is absolutely gorgeous. Look at her facial structure. I'm just going to take some time here and just look at how beautiful she is. I love using Sketchy because there's so many like regular people who are absolutely gorgeous and they're just amazing to draw. So thank you, Sketchy, for being here for us creatives. <laughs> and so I have to admit, I just found a new toy, which is Procreate. And um, I, I've, I refu I've kind of held off on it, but I found it was so much fun in, um, um, in using and playing with sketching because I'm not like I I don't have a lot of patience for drawing um, and so I like to get it done really quickly but I like to play too and I found that procreate is a great place to practice and play so here I pre sketch this is another sketch that I did a long time ago her face and then I played around with different stories and themes here that is so much fun. Now, I'm still a beginner at Procreate. I know there's a sketchy class for that, so I might just have to take that. Um, so this is about as far as I've gotten with sketchy, um, sketching, I'm not sketchy, with Procreate. I, I don't, I haven't gotten as far as adding color and all that stuff, but you know, I played with what happens if I make her hair bigger? You know, what happens if I add circles all around? So I just found that that was, that's something I learned recently. Here's my pre-sketch here. Um, and I think I kind of played around with this kind of 
rectangle shape here. All right, so let's get with painting. Forget me talking, I'm talking too much. Um, but I just wanted to go over some of those things because they're kind of important. Um, the colors, let me go over my colors here. I have Titan Buff, I have Naples Yellow, I have Red Oxide, and I have Payne's Gray. The type of acrylic paint, excuse my ugly paint tubes here, are golden the high fluid acrylics. I like them. Um, you know, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not like loyal to uh, those, uh, that acrylic brand. Um, but they, they work really well. I like this, uh, this palette for darker skin, but if you don't have these colors, burnt sienna and, uh, ultramarine blue make really great darks. Alizarin Crimson and Ultramarine Blue. I like the I like mixing this Red Oxide and Paints Gray together. I, I just like it, and I don't really like using White White, so I that's why I use the Titan Buff um, to uh, as as my light. So let's see if I have any questions. Any questions? Someone asked the colors, um, and and I will actually. Before we get started, make sure you uh, post your paintings, uh, creations in the Sketchy Live group in the Sketchy Art School. I will actually, if I can, I think I can, I will list all the supplies, the names, the colors, the brands that I'm using in this class. So you'll have that as well. Um, so, and I'll actually list my finished piece. So. You can see the photo of our muse up in the corner here in color, but I like to work from a black and white photo. I find it makes it a lot easier for me to see the values. And I feel like the values are more important than color, anything else. And if I can get the values right, I can get the, the rest of the, you know, the, the painting right. And I'm not really worried about making it look exactly like her. I kind of want to like, sometimes I get really intuitive in my process and I just go, you know, and I get in this zone. Um, I'd be curious to know everybody else's process. Do you plan, do you have this strict structure or do you just intuitively let go and, and whatever happens, happens? I fall in that, you know, so a lot of times this, she'll start kind of transforming into something completely different and I'm okay with that. But in this lesson, I'm gonna try my best to, to not go out into this whole other world creatively. Um, another way I like to print out is in this posterized view, because if you look, you can actually see the values broken up into sections. So you get to really see the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And sometimes in a photo, that's deceiving. So when you print it out in black and white and in this view, you it, it helps you see it a little bit better. All right, so um, this is, I used, um, I have an app on my phone. Um, I th I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Um, it's poster something. Uh, I'll, when I post my photo, I'll, I'll find the app <laughs> that I use, but I use our, or Photoshop is another way you can print this out this way. All right, so let me get started. I have a selection of old brushes, no particularly brand um, that I stick with, but a lot of them are flats and filberts. I kind of like using those smaller brushes one because this is a lot smaller here. Um, so I'm just going to get those together here and I'm going to start blocking in my color. I'll start with the hair and I'm going to make my dark, which is a Payne's gray. And I like mixing this red oxide and it makes this like purpley in the, the film looking at it on here doesn't do it justice, but it has this like purpley, like dark eggplant esque. Uh, color to it, which I really, really like. And this is why I like using this um, palette here. And I'm just going to go ahead and just fill in the hair shape for right now, because that's the easiest thing. And I know that's the color. I start with the, um, the easiest part first, and then 
I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a artist that likes to ev avoid things that are really hard. So there are some um, areas that I avoid, hands, ears. <laughs> um, there are a lot of areas that I will wait to the very end of a uh, piece to actually uh, resolve and deal with. Um, so I am definitely an avoider, but I stick with and I start with the easiest part first. So I'm just going to go in here and just kind of block in the hair shape. This is just a blocking in right now. I'm using the acrylic to block in my colors here using uh, my posterized photo here as my guide. It's kind of like my creative training wheel. It's what I use. I use a lot of creative training wheels. I never call them cheating because we are all in different points of our creative process. It's not all of us are, you know, amazing from the get go. A lot of us need to practice and a lot of us need a helping hand when we are creating. Um, and so I am always big on talking about the creative training wheels. So this photo is a great way to see. It's a great training wheel. It helps you build up creative muscle memory, which I'm a big, big proponent of. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I filled in my hair shape. It's just a shape. This is also the awkward phase of my creative process because it's going to look kind of raw and rough and then I'm going to go in with colored pencils to make it look like I want. I'm not going to say the word perfect. I'm not going to use that word because there is no such thing as perfect. It's what I want it to be. That's the wording that I like to use. And I'm just looking at my photo and just looking at the areas that are dark, dark. It's all I'm focused on. I picked up a smaller round brush to do this um, just because so it gives me a little bit more control. And you notice from the picture, really, there, there aren't a whole lot of dark darks, really. Uh, and I'm just kind of roughly kind of following the shapes because what's great about looking at the photo in this way is it breaks the values into shapes. So it's just a great way to see a little differently. All right. And I'm not worried about this. I think I'm gonna just block that in really quickly. I'm just gonna get a bigger brush, water it down, water this dark down just a bit, and I'm gonna block this in because I'm gonna use some collage in a bit. So I'm not worried about this here, but I'll just block it in for now. Okay, now, see if any questions, definitely ask questions. Um, anything you need to know, this was again my dark, which I mixed Payne's Gray and Red Oxide. Now I'm gonna move looking at my photo here. I'm going to look, there's a darker, it's not as dark as this, but it's a little darker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move up the scale here, adding a little bit of that Naples yellow and just kind of getting, uh, playing here. A lot of times I'll test it out. I'll test it out on here to see if, if that's really where I wanna go. A lot of times I test it out on the neck area, but I covered up the neck area, so. Okay, I think that that works. Um, and I'm just gonna go in looking at this darker color. You can see it here between the eyes, right? Under the chin, areas around the cheek area. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna loosely go in and just add these shapes here. And just trying my best to follow 
this color on my piece here. And I'm just going slow. I don't need to rush through this process. You can take your time. It's okay if it's not, right? We don't use the word perfect, but it's okay. It's okay if it looks a little rough. It's okay if it looks a little rugged. I don't get too caught up. <laughs> you know, my sketchbook is my play. So I, I don't get really caught up in the perfection of things. I just kind of let myself play. Again, whatever happens, happens is my philosophy in here. And, you know, sometimes things work really well. A lot of times things work really well. And sometimes they don't work. Uh, and, and I'm okay with that. And a lot of times my play here becomes a bigger project in a, on a canvas. So this is where I kind of get the kinks out. I play, I, you know, see if it works. I see if things work. I'm just going to pick up a smaller brush here. And this is my dress rehearsal or my practice before I go ahead and break out that expensive large canvas. I can get all the play out here and see if if this actually works. Sometimes ideas in your head just aren't don't work out really well. So this is just a great way to kind of see and, and play. So I've gone through here just kind of quickly and loosely. If I didn't have you here with me, I would probably rush, probably take my time here. I'm actually rushing through this. I'm gonna slow down just a bit, especially when I get to the pencils, cause that's where the fun, the fun is here. All right, so let's look at our photo again. There's another, here's another color here that is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit lighter here. And I'm going to go, I just added a little bit of more of the Naples yellow. I might go in just a little bit of the Payne's gray, just to, so it's, so it's a little bit grayer. And I'm just going to go in and fill in those areas that are in this kind of, color here, this lighter, lighter, slightly lighter value here. At, you see, I just forgot the lips. So let me go back in with the darker. Maybe that's an avoidance. <laughs> and I'm just going in really loosely here, just really trying to maintain the shape of things but not worried about the perfection of ever actually worried about kind of I'm, I'm actually allowing myself to kind of let go here and kind of get a little get a little loose um, and this helps me stay loose i have a problem with getting too tight sometimes and so when i do this it helps me stay, I think I went a little too, too far there. Let's see here. It helps me stay loose and expressive instead of trying to get to that, you know, copy the photo state. I can stay a little bit looser um, in this state here. All right, let's move on. I see a lighter value. I'm gonna get lighter here. Just kind of getting, making a lighter, that's, it's too orangey. So I'm going to go in a little bit more Payne's gray. Ah, that's too much. And I'll test it. Let me see what that looks like. Oh, we'll go for it. And I'll go in and add that to kind of 
of all, pretty much the rest. I'll save all that, the light lights. And it does look kind of rough. I'm okay with that because this is just a foundation. Sometimes what I will do here is I will continue on with several other layers using the acrylic. And you'll see me do that in my class that's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> I actually do this, um, I do this process there and I actually go in, I'm just kind of going in with the other values just to touch up areas here. You'll see me go in with acrylic several layers um, before I start the colored pencils. But for the sake of time here, I'm just going to get a rough, rough. Let's see here. Ah, that's still wet. I'm just going to get a rough blocking in here. And... Let me just, I'm just going to take the, the Titan buff to add my light in there. Now I didn't do the, the eyes. <laughs> I left that for my colored pencils. I'll do that with my colored pencils. And then I'm just going to go in and just kind of touch up with some darks. Um, one thing that I always, whenever I get lost, I go back in with my darks and that's what I'm doing now. Just, just to get it, oh, that was too much. Just to, just so it's there, just so I can see it. Sometimes when you're going in, you can lose the darks in there. Oh, that's all dried up here. Okay. So I got a really rough, rough blocking in. She looks rough. This is, I told you, this is the awkward stage here. Um, actually, I wanted her to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to go. This is my intuitive self here going in and just kind of warming up a little bit of color here. It's how I roll here. Okay. I think we're good. I think I'm good. Okay. And I'll just go in. I'll take this, the Naples yellow and I'll fill in her. That's still wet. I'll fill in her earrings really quickly like so all right so I've got my rough rough <laughs> rough and raw foundation this is just my foundation so there's there's in, in right now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add some colored pencils but if I had all day to work on this I would probably go in and continue to add additional layers slowly building up the layers to focus on detail and focus on blending. But we're gonna move on to the colored pencils based on time. I'm just gonna make, looking at the screen here, I'm gonna make a few adjustments because I see. Um, it's always a good idea to step back and observe a lot of times you don't realize it, especially if you're working in your sketchbook. When you're on the easel, it's a lot easier to see, but when you're in your sketchbook, you're, the angle that you are, um, you don't, see, sometimes things get a little wonky. And what tends to happen with me, if I'm at this angle where I'm looking down at my sketchbook and I'm creating, things get, things, I tend to, they kind of get stretched out this way. So I have to, step back every so often put my sketchbook up so i can see it straight ahead um, because i tend to things do get wonky when i'm at this angle so i definitely need 
I always suggest stepping back, observing, seeing where you are, seeing what's happening, making sure the story is working, um, you know, so that because a lot of times my eyes get too small or they get too big. One eye gets starts moving itself over here and I'm not I'm too zoned into my paper. I got my head in my paper. I'm not stepping back to observe and to see what's happening. Just one tip from me. Any questions? I'm just kind of, thank you so much. Um, so Dean says, I bought acrylics and been so afraid to use them. Go ahead. You know, I love acrylics. The thing about acrylics though, is it dries really fast. And I'm gonna talk as I do this. So I'm gonna just kind of dry this. I have my little heat gun here and that I'm just gonna dry really quick. I love this heat gun because it's hot. <laughs> ah! Kind of messed up there. All right. So acrylics dry really fast. And um, let me tell you what I'm doing. I have clear gesso, not white gesso, clear gesso. Uh, and I, I'm going to talk while I do this. So I add... Ooh, the layer of clear gesso to my face and hair because I'm going to move on with colored pencils. I need to finish my story about acrylics in a second, but I just want to tell you what I'm doing right now. Um, and the reason why I'm using clear gesso, you notice I'm all over the place. That's what happens when I'm creating. Um, I'm using the clear gesso because I need a gritty surface for my colored pencils to adhere to. A lot of times the acrylics that you use have this glossy finish and you notice when you're coloring over um, acrylics with um, your, you know, cover, coloring, let me talk right, covering over acrylics with a colored pencil, it's like, it feels like you're drawing on plastic sometimes. Um, so here I give it a layer of the, I like the clear gesso and it gives it a really nice gritty surface. Now I know it looks cloudy. Don't worry. It dries clear. Um, so this gives it a really yummy gritty surface so that I can do my colored pencils. All right. So finish my acrylic story. Acrylics dry really fast. And when I'm painting portraits, I'm constantly rushing back and forth to blend because I like to blend really well. Um, so it, it's it's a definite learning curve for me because I like to use oils when I'm doing portraits. Um, I will suggest if acrylics scare you because it dries so fast, I've used, I've actually used, Golden has a brand called Open Acrylics. I'm not gonna say it acts like oil, but it takes a little bit longer to dry. It stays wet longer. Um, it's definitely a different experience because I found that those acrylics are a little watery. I don't know, they just kind of kind of weird. Um, but um, I, I, you know, just, just if you're looking for acrylics, you don't like acrylics because they dry too fast, there's an option. So. As this is drying, I'm gonna start my collage. I have, here's another, <laughs> another tool um, that I have at my disposal here, matte gel medium. Now you can use regular matte medium. I like using the gel just because of the texture. And I have some tissue paper that I'm gonna collage with this. Now I have a large uh, collage stash. Let me clean my brush here. I collect everything, tissue paper, wrapping paper, old books, old magazines, um, old newspapers. Here's a great collage. Um, if you live or you have any access to wall, a wallpaper store, those wallpaper samples, amazing collage stuff, like awesome. I'm taking a flat brush and I'm taking the matte gel medium and I'm just kind of adding it to the body here. Now, tissue paper is really light, so you, you don't need a whole lot. I love doing this. <laughs> so I have probably two bins of, of 
collecting paper. I even make my own paper. I've actually taken buying, bought rice paper and I've painted over it with inks and, and watercolor. So great, great ideas right there for um, mixed media work. So here I'm just intuitively here. I always work intuitively. I'm just ripping, no scissors here. I'm ripping and just adding. I'm just using this dark brown color, dark brown, see? Once I start creating, I can't speak. <laughs> I'm using dark blue. <laughs> now this tissue paper is actually called bleeding tissue paper. It actually, um, it's not doing it now, but it actually bleeds the color. So it will blend. It's kind of like watercolor actually. And I just kind of go in here really kind of loosely and freely, just kind of, this is so relaxing. Sometimes I'll take old books and collage them all over. I do this in my bigger pieces as well. I have actually added collage to oil paintings as well. How do I do that since you can't mix oil with any of the, you can't, once you put oil down, you can't put those acrylic mediums down, right? They won't, they won't work. Um, to collage with oil paintings, write this down. I use cold wax medium to do that. So, and I can't remember the brand. I think it's Gamblin that makes that, but there's another mixed media tool there. All right, so I'm just, this is where I have fun. I let go, I just kind of rip. Again, whatever happens, happens. That's my motto here. And I just kind of let go here. And it's so meditative here. And I'm not worried about the shape. I don't get caught up in the shape either because it just adds to the expression and, and just the the looseness again whatever happens happens and you just kind of let it happen and i just kind of go over that there with the matte gel medium again you can use the liquidy um uh, matte medium i don't use the gloss medium because it's just really shiny uh, it's a little too shiny, but I like using that. It takes a little long to dry, um, but sometimes I'll even collage stuff all throughout there as well. So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna check this. I'm just gonna give it a quick blow dry here. Not blow dry, but this is my heat gun. So it gets dry here. I'll let this kind of dry naturally. Okay. All right, so I could leave it here, actually. <laughs> I haven't decided what to do here in the background. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm still thinking, but let's just kind of focus on the colored pencils here. And we'll leave the background for later, or I might just block in color there. If you have any suggestions, let me know. <laughs> Again, I'm very intuitive in my process. I just kind of let things happen. All right, so my colored pencils. The brand I'm using here are the Derwent Colorsoft pencils. I like them. Um, I, I do have the Prismacolor pencils too. I, I don't know, somehow I just like these. Another brand I really like are these chunky ones. Uh, create a color mega color pencils that I use. I like these two, and the, the colors that I have are um, Derwent actually has a skin tone set that um, that's how I found them. And I have like white, I have some burnt sienna type colors, some you know, just orangey brownish colors like a Naples yellow, white, pink, a light, and a mid pink. I have some reds here um, and I have some browns here. That's a dark brown. 
and that's another so I just have a selection of of my skin tone colors here I mean in you know this is where you can really let go you know pull a purple or a or a lilac or lavender or, or some green or something out of the mix and just kind of play with that too. So, um, but here I'm gonna stick with these here. And I just like using the chunky ones. Where's my chunky pencil? Here. I like using these chunky ones cause they just, they cover a lot of area. So I just go through here. I'm just gonna work on one side of the face. See, we are with time here. Um, and I usually, see, I didn't work on the eyes, so let me get the eyes in here. This is gonna take a while to dry. And I just go in with my pencils and just start working, working through them here. And this is, again, another relaxing part of the process here and I just go ahead and just play I don't press down really hard I actually just kind of lightly dance it over and you'll feel that gritty surface you'll feel the pencil um, just kind of adhering to that gritty surface and you can just lightly very lightly like I, I don't have a I'm not scrubbing down with the pencil here. And I'll just lightly brush that. And just kind of massage it in there and just really, this is like the relaxation part of the process. And I just think, the re, what, why do I use colored pencils? I like using them. I love the way they feel. Like I love having the control of the pencils you know I love being able to hold it in my hand and I have I feel like I have a lot more control I'm picking up a kind of like a lighter orangey brown color actually no, I like this one better this is like a lighter burnt sienna color I love just have one I love having the control and I love how they feel in my hand. I love the texture that they leave. They just leave this rough, gritty texture that I like. Now, not everybody's gonna like it. Um, I like the feel of it. And I can smudge it with my finger as well. And I just kind of work through each of the colors there. Just kind of utilizing my foundation here to help me get through, figure out where. Where colors go here. And I will slowly, very slowly, using my, where's my photo reference here? I had it here. I don't know what I did with it here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> using, now this is the black and white um, version of this photo. So this would be my guide here too. Using this as my guide to, you know, help me figure out the direction here that I want to go in. And just kind of slowly, just lightly dancing that pencil over the surface. Now, sometimes you'll notice um, you can overwork areas you know, sometimes you'll notice that the pencil just doesn't adhere anymore. You've done too much. You can always go back over it. I've done several clear, I want to stress, clear gesso layers because I have made the mistake of using white gesso and just totally covering up my piece here. So 
Um, you can do multiple layers just to get that, if you need to get that grit back. And I just really love the, the look of, I could try this yellow here, of the pencils. And I pretty much stick with these colors here. Let me get actually this this one. And I just move the pencil in the direction um, that the face structure is going. You know, so if it's dipping downward, I move the pencil in that direction. Where's my light pink? Where'd you go? Here you go. And just taking a look. And then using my finger to smudge in get it to blend. Any questions here? Let's see. Let me check to see if there's any questions here. Um, someone mentioned some colored pencil brands, which are good. I'll definitely take a look at that. Um, list the colors of the pencils I use. Um, I'll list it. It's a, it's a, this is kind of like a, it's called, it's in the, um, Derwent Color Soft Skin Tone Set. So this looks like burnt sienna. It's called mid terracotta. This is a pink, a light pink color. This is, um, pimento, which is, this is not in the skin tone set, but this is kind of like a lighter value of the burnt sienna. This is a darker value of the pink. Um, and this is just a dark brown, like a burnt umber. Uh, here's white. I haven't used it, but here's a yellow ochre color. And what else? These are all the same. And then I have like a red. This is called cranberry that I can use, especially in the, the cheek area here that I'll play around with and so forth. Um, let me get at least one side done. I tend to talk a lot. <laughs> There's so much to explain that I can't help it. <laughs> There's so many cool tips that I've learned in, um, you know, my creative journey here that I just love to share. I'm going to take out my big, this one is really fun. This is um, the mega color. The color is called tan light. It doesn't look like tan. It looks kind of like a fleshy color. And continue on this, this, ah, this uh, collage is not dry yet. So, but I will show some examples of what I do over it here. I got some of it on there. <laughs> and I'm just kind of working through I'm just going to try my best to get at least one side completed here. And then I will post my finished piece in the sketchy live group, which I hope you will share what you're working on in the sketchy live group. I can't wait to see 
your version of this beautiful model here. I'm just gonna take the white and just kind of go in there. And so forth here. And so I'm getting one side of the face done there. I know I want to add some, I'm going to add some pink in the eye area here. Really kind of get that in there. See where we are with time here. And so forth. So I got one, I'm, I'm almost, where's my big chunky here? i am got one side almost done here. I wanted to do some work in the hair before, before um, I leave you today because one of the focus in the class that is coming out tomorrow is hair. I'm gonna be doing a lot of focus on painting hair um, in a, in mixed media. So I definitely wanted to share that. So I'm just going to get the forehead done just a bit. And then I'm just going to use the colored pencil, um, to, uh, get the, uh, hair in. So I'm going to go get my, I have a dark, dark brown. Where'd it go? Right here. And let's see, we'll, we'll just kind of use this big chunky pencil and I'll just go in and because I have the gritty surface in there, I'm just going in and adding some squiggles, just really loose squiggles here. Now, usually what I will do is I will block in the background and then go in with finishing the, the touches of the hair. So once I decide on a background, let me use, uh, let's use the, let's stick with this here. I'm just gonna add some. So now I'm going in and I'm squiggling just some texture and layering in the hair here. Again, I can smudge. Another thing I like to do uh, to add curls in the hair, acrylic ink is great for uh, adding curls. I like using the acrylic ink because it flows a little bit better than the acrylic here. It's a lot, um, I like it better than watering down acrylic because if you water down your acrylic, you kind of lose the vibrancy of the acrylic. So um, I like using acrylic ink, especially getting in those tiny little hair strands. So I'm just going in, I have this, it's called ochre. It just kind of looks like yellow ochre. And I'm just going in with a lighter value here, just a lighter kind of highlight in the hair here. Now, what happens if what you're doing is like, oh, that's too much. I don't like that. Guess what? Just go back in and cover it up with your acrylic. That's the beauty of acrylic paint, isn't it? That you can just kind of cover things up if you don't like something. I'm just kind of going in. And I love because there is that gritty um, surface there that I can smudge. I'm just gonna take a brown and just kind of soften. There's too much, look at how it looks like she has a wig on. <laughs> and I'm just kind of softening the area, the hair to the forehead here. And I'm not done with the forehead. I'm still gonna go in and do some work in the forehead area. I'm just kind of doing a little bit more playing here. And I will spend a good, I mean, this, I could spend a 
good couple hours sitting here with the um, colored pencils here. Again, I would probably go in with more layers with the acrylic before I start adding the, the pencil. But I just wanted to be able to show you kind of how the build up the look of the pencil. Look how much fun that is. These are great, <laughs> these big chunky ones. I'm just gonna go. And it's just a very light, I'm, you definitely don't wanna scrub. And because you put that clear gesso on there, you don't need to scrub. I just wanna get, get a little highlight. I'm gonna get some white in here and just kinda make sure I step back and make sure I'm not. Just get at least one side almost done. Put the yellow here. Okay, so I got pretty much one side completed. What I would do, and let, let me just kind of talk about where else I would go with this. Um, let me see if I can dry this really quick before we're done. It does take a while to dry. So I wanted to do one last thing before I leave you. <laughs> I wish I could spend all day with you. All right, let's see if that works. I love taking my white gel pen and I love one, going in and adding those bright, bright highlights with the gel pen. And I am still kind of not done with the face there, but I like going in with the gel pen. I also like going in and just adding little bright little squiggles in the hair with the white gel pen. And you can smudge as well. I can go in and just kind of add some highlights to the earrings. I didn't finish the earrings. One, but one thing I like doing, and I'll show you an example in my sketchbook. I love doing line work in the bodice area here. This is another really relaxing, and I'll show you some examples because I've done a bunch of these. So I like taking a gel pen or Posca paint pen. Love those too in white. And just doing some line work here, really relaxing. Just adds just to the mixed media element of your piece. Just a lot of fun there. And it's just really interesting once it's all said and done. Actually, you know, maybe I don't need, maybe I just kind of go in with some white gesso in the background. I, you know what, I don't, I don't know what to do here. I kind of like, there's half of her face there that we finished. <laughs> but I'll go in and let me see, I'm going to move these out the way. And see if I can give you some examples in here of what, um, what I mean by, the line work well here I did some here's tissue paper and I did some line work I actually did some writing in you can see the writing um, behind there uh, but there's an example Let's see if we can find anything else here um, here's an example here um, this was at, this face is actually a it's a stencil. 
So if you're if you're not really cool about drawing faces, there are stencils out there. This stencil I've used several times, which you notice here. This is all line work here as well that I played with um, too. So there's just some great ideas. Some ideas for backgrounds. Um, I can go in with collage. I can, you know, go in with some uh, stencil work. This is all gesso with um, some stencils in there as well. Um, and you see how I, I used all the, the, the um, gel pens. <laughs> here we go. All right, so this is where I'm going to end it here. I'm going to end it here. Any questions? Um, how do I preserve? Well, this is my sketchbook, so I, I don't really need to preserve anything. But if I was going to preserve it, I would cover it with a uh, matte medium or a... I, I don't tend to cover it with the, the gloss medium because I find that the gloss sticks together in the book. Um, so maybe, but I don't really need to preserve this. But you need to take into account, if you are working your sketchbook, and you are using uh, materials that continue to activate with water. Um, watercolor pencils, charcoal pencils, um, pastels. Uh, there's like a Stabilo All Pencil that I use all the time. Understand that, that you can, uh, uh, to preserve those things so they don't continue to activate or continue to con contaminate your piece. A workable fixative is a great way to spray over it and preserve it. So that's, I guess that's another, but I, I just kind of leave it as is. This goes in my book and I close it and I, I go back into it. Um, any other questions? Uh, what kind of sketchbook? This is again, Canson Mixed Media Sketchbook, nine by 12. Sometimes these are on sale at the craft store. Buy one, get one 50% off. I don't know, wherever you are. Love this sketchbook. I use it all the time. Um, you know, or I will make my own, which I still use the Canson, but the watercolor. The watercolor paper is really good too. Um, let me see. Let's see. So I think the link, I think sketchy the link. So don't forget... Um, before I leave you, I had so much fun today. Definitely check out my class. It's coming out tomorrow. I'm so excited for um, mixed media portraits in my sketchbook. That's I'm so excited that I was invited to teach a class for Sketchy. I can't wait to share that. So definitely check that out tomorrow. Um, and definitely post your work in the Sketchy Live app. The link is provided in the chat. And also, I think there's a sale coming out on the, on the 4th, July 4th. Uh, that's what I heard. So uh, definitely, uh, I love taking Sketchy classes. I love learning. I think they have some absolutely amazing teachers. You can learn so much um, and I love just learning. So I, I definitely want to learn more about Procreate. So I'm going to check that out. Um, and that landscape, oh, there's a lot of things. I, I love uh, kind of perusing through Sketchy uh, and playing with it. So I had a great time creating. Sorry, I couldn't finish, but I'm going to finish her and I'm going to post. I'll take pictures and I'll post my finished process. I'll list everything that I used, colors, um, definitely, you know, let me know if you have any questions, definitely check out my class. I can't wait to create with you. And thank you so much for having me on sketchy. Thank you for spending the, uh, time with me today in sketchy live. And I hope to create with you again. Thank you so much.